<laughs> okay, thank, thanks very much. Um, thanks for that, Anne. It's, uh, it was really, uh, really powerful, and it's, uh, it's very difficult to follow that talk with this talk, which... <laughs> This, this talk is very much about uh, promoting the benefits of selling out to crass commercialism. Uh, so, thanks to the, whoever organized the program. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so, those of you who have been following the program very closely will notice that we themed our paper very strongly with references to MC Hammer. Okay? Um, and we haven't really done that with the talk. Um, it's kind of these days. It's quite difficult to get your hands on high-quality parachute pants. And uh, we kind of we have some things that we actually want to say in this in this talk. And we you know we thought that might distract from it. So we're going to kind of stick to the point here and actually just do a talk unusually. Um, and we're talking about something which is very much in the mainstream of HCI, which is the idea of designing engagement. Uh, except here we're talking about how we design massive, crazy, stupid amounts of engagement. Um, and, and that's what we're going to talk to you about today. So um, basically, we've, we, we've come to the point where we've sold out, and we're going to try and bring you along with us. Um, so a little bit of context. So this is idea of in, in, uh, designing to encourage user engagement. This is something that's kind of been happening throughout the whole history of HCI. You know, one of our cross-cutting concerns, regardless of what you know, our, our, our approach is, uh, is how to design interfaces, objects, and services in a way that encourages people to use, uh, to use them or to keep using them. Uh, and there's this idea, so obviously it's not the only thing we're trying to design for. We're trying to solve problems. We're trying to design for usability, accessibility, all of those kinds of things. But one of the th things we're trying to create is engagement, OK? Um, the idea is that if we design things well enough, people will be really engaged. Uh, and it, so in, in some way, the engagement it's kind of inherent in the design. It's in, so the user engagement is an outcome of our design work. So the work we do in, in designing things creates this thing of engagement uh, in our users. Um, it's something to do with how we arrange menu structures, how we manage the cognitive load, and how we kind of apply fits law. And there's, it's all of those things together. And that's what we do. We're trying, we're trying to have these engaging outcomes. Uh, the idea is that engaging things are designed well, and things that are not engaging are designed less well. So that's a very brief. The, the idea of you know, what we're trying to do is design things that are engaging. That's the kind of context for this work. And we will come back to it. But what we'll do now is move on to Pokemon Go. Um, so this is really where we started with this paper. Um, like basically every other games researcher, we looked at the popularity of Pokemon Go, scratched our heads, and, and thought, what is going on here? This does not make any sense. Um, Basically, uh, Pokemon Go, if, if you, if you kind of listen to the games researchers, Pokemon Go is not a good game, okay? I'm sorry, Pikachu, it's just not. Um, so, there's a whole, there's essentially, in the last year, there's uh, emerged an entire academic sub-discipline that just criticizes Pokemon Go and says, this shouldn't be good, and nobody should enjoy this. Because basically what it does is uh, it kind of uh, ignores a lot of the research on that from, the, from the past 15 to 20 years on mixed reality games, on location-based games. You know, we, we kind of think we've got to a point where we understand how we can do these things well and what things we need to avoid doing. And Pokemon Go doesn't do a lot of those things. Okay? Um, and the other thing that Pokemon Go does is the, the company who, who produced Pokemon Go, um, Niantic, actually made a much better game that nobody played. Okay? And it's called Ingress. Uh, Pokemon Go is different than Ingress because it's simpler, uh, uh, so a lot of the functionality has been removed. But there's a, one other big difference as well. Can anybody tell me what that difference is? Sorry? Yeah, there's Pokemon in it, yeah. So, <laughs> so this brought us to this point. <laughs> so we were kind of thinking, oh, I know, like, uh, Maybe we could just put Pokemon in everything, and people will love it, and, and it'll get 500 million downloads uh, and be the most popular app on the App Store. Um, and then, I suppose, with a little bit of thought, uh, we got to the point where um, we realized maybe it's not just Pokemon. Maybe there's a bigger point there about uh, applying things, uh, basically nostalgia from our childhood. So including uh, nostalgic references to things that we enjoyed in our childhood in the designs of the things that we interact with, 
makes us feel like, I suppose, we're interacting with, with those uh, things from our childhood. So the trick in Pokemon Go was not in designing seamless, intuitive interactions and in making beautiful graphics and, and uh, useful interfaces, but in slapping a layer of nostalgia over the top of this, uh, that's kind of sort of matched to the game design. Um, so, so nostalgia is interesting. It's been talked about a lot uh, recently. Uh, you know, there's a lot of recent trends, I suppose. Uh, if you look at uh, media like uh, cinema, uh, and all of that, we see lots of reboots of things that we would have seen in our childhood. Uh, so it's been discussed a lot uh, as being something that's like an easy win, that you can get lots of people to engage with your stuff by, by making, you know, filling with nostalgia. But we think that it's, it's actually more interesting now. We think it should be considered part, when we're doing interaction design, we should actually be thinking about how this nostalgia, this la layer of nostalgia we're slapping on things can actually change the experience fundamentally. Uh, so this is what we're proposing here is this is a, an alternative way of designing for engagement. Uh, so instead of just focusing on you know the actual menus and, and how the information is managed, we also think about how is how is the kind of narrative that we're slapping on top of this uh, uh, interacting with our with our engagement, I suppose. So we can get loads more engagement by cynically applying nostalgia. That's what we're trying to promote here. So we've come up with a model for nostalgification. Um, so, because we re we realised that this was really useful, but then we wanted to share it with everybody else because we didn't re basically couldn't be bothered doing it all ourselves. So you guys can can uh, can go and do it. So uh, we made a tool that all of you can use uh, to nostalgify your HCI research projects uh, and cynically gain similar benefits as Pokemon Go did. Uh, this is our gift to you, uh, and this is the major contribution of our work. So if anyone's questioning the contribution of this talk, this is what it is here. Um, so we set out to, to make this model, we looked at loads of other models, we realised wheels are important, uh, so lots of, lots of the best models involve wheels, so <laughs> we've come up with, we've got this wheel, we've got this wheel, uh, uh, that's, that's the wheel of nostalgification. Essentially uh, this is a wheel containing nostalgic cult cultural references, so the thing is that you can just basically throw in anything there that you think is, is appropriate. So if you're, if you're designing for an audience of 30-somethings, you'll just fill that with stuff from the 80s. In this case, we've got references to Criss Cross, Mr. T, uh, Carlton Banks, Banks dancing to uh, Tom Jones, uh, and all those kinds of things. Um, so, the, so we've got a wheel, okay? The wheel is not enough on its own, obviously. That's, that's sort of interesting. We've got a wheel. What's the wheel do? It spins around. Something has to happen, yeah? So we've also uh, got the crucial part here, which is the hammer, okay? And the idea, the idea is that whatever your idea is, we can spin a wheel around and just like smash, like crudely smash some of the, the nostalgic ideas onto our design. Uh, so we think that's, that's a kind of a, a nice model for how we do this design work, and actually it's probably how Pokemon Go was designed. Um, <laughs> They didn't start by trying to make a Pokemon game. They, they had a game, right? They just threw something on top of it. So, so basically, yeah, and this also has that, uh, that kind of funny thing to do with, with models with wheels in them that we're not sure if it's a diagram or a, like a mechanism. Uh, I don't know if people have noticed that way, those models before, but it's a... Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, it can be either, I suppose. So, oh yeah, and there's, yeah, the other part is obviously MC Hammer is there using the hammer. Um, I'm going to hand over now to Ben, who's going to show what applying the hammer looks like, what it, the benefits that it can give us. All right. Uh, yeah, so uh, got, we've got kind of a few examples of, so in, in the paper, we kind of go through in some depth about how we've gone to the effort of applying the hammer. Uh, but I'll go through a couple of examples uh, here quickly. So um, first of all, I think about thing, things that HCI research is like, really concerned with. Uh, a lot of people spending a lot of time thinking about wearables, uh, and especially the sort of emotional wearables, wearables that can provoke empathy or you know, allow you to share things and gain sort of closeness and friendship with the people around you. None, it's probably fair to say none of the kind of research has become that popular. So. Uh, we're going to suggest uh, maybe uh, using the wheel. If we, if we reframe it as care bearables, then you know the we'll we'll get uh, more engagement with people. Oh, this, this is Fitz Bear, um, who's the bear of pointing. <laughs> so. 
Um, digital civics, of course, um, again, um, a very big topic in HCI. There's a lot of concern with how, you know, how can we uh, design things that engage people with, with politics. Um, this is kind of controversial. This is Marcus's idea, and he's not here. In fact, he took himself <laughs> off the paper after suggesting this idea, so we'll blame him for this one. Uh, but yeah, you can also think that the other way around. So you know, maybe you're a government, and maybe your kind of overseas exploits aren't um, being perceived that well by, by your public, so you, you might you turn to nostalgification to help people understand the, the needs for um, bombing weddings in Yemen. Um, so perhaps like some kind of Sonic the Hedgehog theme. So naturally, uh, Tails the Fox from Sonic the Hedgehog is a predator, so uh, quite nicely applied to the predator drone, a nice friendly way for to, us to understand our military industrial complex. And this slide's only just gone in <laughs> in a minute. But is that, does anyone, was anyone at Kai 2011 in Vancouver? There's, there's, there's enough people that we can, we can do this joke. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so in Kai 2011, there's this, this uh, device was given out to all participants. Um, it's called a Pokin. Uh, so Connor's wearing, modeling one for us now. Um, and it's kind of like a little gadget. It's got a chip in it. And the idea is if you put two pokens together, you kind of connect. And then you can go on the website and you can see who you've, you've been connecting with. Um, the fact that none of you, apart from Connor, is still wearing your poken <laughs> means didn't go that well. So the, the obvious example there is Pokemon Mon Go for, for next year. Oh. Uh, so as well, so th these are just some kind of ideas that we've been sort of thinking about and throwing around. But then it, we also went through the the program for Kai 2017 and then thought, you know, how could people have improved their research papers? And I think we've chosen ones that are on at the same time. So hopefully, we're not offending anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, for example, um, so so we went through and had, we, we thought about how these research papers might be enhanced through nostalgification. Um, and so uh, in, th in this case, as a, a uh, a paper about about pointing, and it's about a this the shoe that allows you to, to select things, and then they include this uh, typical kind of diagram of, of their pro the prototype that they've made, uh, but not you know they could do a better job of uh, <laughs> branding it. So perhaps if their paper was titled like this way, and then the diagram is like this, it might appeal to a wider audience than those at Kai. There's there's, there's some papers that uh, that come really close. And you see this quite a lot is where there's, you know, the, the, it's occurred to them that somehow, you know, connecting to nostalgia is important. So in this case, it's clear that the, uh, the acronym was chosen uh, first and then the, the project was fitted to it. Um, but, you know, in, in the paper, they never really, you know, take advantage of it. You know, they, they fall into the classic trap of the HCI researcher, which is to think that the stuff after the colon is more important than the thing before the colon. <laughs> so naturally, we, we kind of propose they should, <laughs> they should go all in <laughs> on, their, on their prototype. Um, um, yeah, and this is a recent example Connor pointed out, which actually, which is uh, to do with the, the Amazon uh, Echo, uh, where um, they've They've enhanced it and added a feature that allows you to talk to it as if it's a computer on Star Trek by saying, like, computer, and then issuing an instruction, uh, which is a great example of nostalgification because it, it conceals how janky and rubbish this kind of technology actually is by making you think that you're on Star Trek when you say it. Um, so just like Pokemon Go hides kind of a crappy game underneath a thick theme, um, Amazon's wising up too. Um, Yep, so back to you, Connor, for the, the contribution, apparently. I thought you were going to say this one. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh -oh. Okay, so I suppose, I mean, you know, that, that, is, that is kind of the, the end of the paper there, but um, I suppose we wanted to wrap up with this point. So branding is not something uh, to be simply slapped on top of the interaction design afterwards. I mean, that's essentially what, what we do, but we think it's more interesting than that because it really fundamentally changes the experience of using it. So like, uh, the, the Pokemon theme really fundamentally changed uh, what, a, what is a very basic kind of treasure hunt game into something that really makes you feel like you're in this adventure. Um, 
it inherently changes that experience uh, of that design. So I think so. That I think there is like an interesting point there uh, about how we kind of maybe kind of make our stuff more fun, and then therefore people might use it more in future. Uh, but I suppose what, fun is a bad word to use there. Uh, I see Mark Lloyd over there. Um, more, uh, we use specifically thinking about how nostalgic uh, nostalgic branding can actually uh, enhance the experience of our design work. Um, yeah, and that's it. So thanks very much for your attention. Hi, I'm Louis Cholfi from Sheffield Hallam University. Thank you very much for this fantastic model. Is I'm going to apply to all my new projects. But I have a question. So, it, nostalgia is a generational thing, and it kind of hinges on the balance from like historical content to plain geekiness. And we know history is boring, and geekiness is just uncool. Whereas nostalgia, obviously, is cool and creates engagement. So how often do you suggest refreshing the nostalgia model mm -hmm. so that it stays current and we can keep designing cool stuff? <laughs> um, well, <laughs> so in, in the paper we proposed, the, the wheel we were shown is the kind of mid to late 30s sort of European model, uh, more European wheel, so you can make your own wheel <laughs> as appropriate. But I mean, just thinking back to the, the past year in politics, both this side of the Atlantic and on our side of the Atlantic, and um, seeing how kind of this uh, sort of rose-tinted vision of a fictional past that you, you want to call back to is, is, is the same kind of mechanism that's uh, like encouraging people to um, engage in bovine behavior, I guess. <laughs> and that's definitely what this is. You know, we're, we're very clear this is, this is a, an example of bovine design in that it is about it, like, maximizing engagement uh, an engagement isn't necessarily the same as good. So. Uh, so I've, I've been wanting to ask this question since I first read the paper. Um, so looking out of my window last year, um, I was watching lots of like eight to 10 year olds playing Pokemon Go. Um, and I don't know if they were from the original generation that saw Pokemon. Um, and I honestly don't know if it's as big today as it was then. Um, but I also know that I got so excited, you know, watching old reruns of Tom and Jerry that I saw as a child and watching young children with me be bored to death and wanting instead to watch, you know, Octonauts or something else. Um, so I guess I'm wondering how you use nostalgia to design for different audiences when you have, when you don't know who your audience will be. I think, that's, I think it's a really good question, and it's probably, it's probably a more in-depth and better question than we've, than we've actually really thought about uh, to this, <laughs> at this point. Um, I mean, the, the funny thing about Pokemon Go is that like, we, it's, if, if it does look kind of like a kid's game, but 75% of the players are over 18. It very much is like nostalgia there. Um, but I take your point that kids do like it as well. And I mean, I suppose maybe they are playing other Pokemon games, or maybe they've been watching cartoons, but I, I really don't know. Uh, what the answer is to that, but I think I just think that's a very good question, and I think that's probably like for further work, or unless you have a better answer. Well, just well, not necessarily an answer, but just thinking about Star Wars and how sort of parents and like some some kinds of nostalgia filters through, and the parents kind of encourage perhaps children to be into um, like intellectual property that that maybe they were into when they were children, uh, mm -hmm. much more in some cases than others. Mm -hmm. Uh, hi, my name is Connor Kelly from UW. Thanks for spelling your name right. Um, so, all right. So, nostalgia is obviously very powerful. It elicits this very emotional response that really uh, gets people engaged. How I'm going to pose this question. You know, maybe not. Don't have to answer it now. But how might we uh, use this type of hook to actually get people engaged critically, um, such as was spoken about in the, la in the previous talk? Sorry, could you say the end of that question again? Uh, how, do we, how do we get people to, how can we use this nostalgic hook to get people to think critically and engage critically versus just like emotion, and, and instead of just the bo bovine design, right? That's a really good question. And I think actually that's, that's, a, um, that's a really interesting space where, where we can uh, contrast the branding maybe with the function of the app. Uh, so something to do with uh, the narrative 
um, of, of the uh, original show uh, that clashes with what you're trying to do maybe would be something that might reveal to you some of the kind of seams in the design or it could reveal to you maybe some of the things that you're doing that you don't really realise. Um, I'm, I'm struggling to think on the top of my head of a really good example of that. Um, I think that, well, the absolute best thing you could do right now is to go and read Anne's paper, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which I think, which, which, which does answer your question because it, you know, it is right. dealing with okay, what do we do as a community? How do we deal with this kind of mm -hmm. approach to design that we perhaps have become used to? Great, thanks, guys. Great presentation. Thank you. Thank you.